Senate will please come to order. I would ask that all members please take their seats. The clerk will unlock the machine for the purpose of recording attendance. All members have recorded their attendance. The clerk, the clerk will please lock the machine. There are 36 members present. There is a quorum. I'll ask all members to, and their guests to please rise for the invocation and pledge of allegiance to be led today by Senator Stephen Archibald, representing the towns of Smithfield, North Providence, and Johnston. Senator Archibald. Thank you, Mr. President. Almighty God, Help us through the stresses and the strains of the day by granting us your serenity and peace and guide us through this COVID pandemic. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Senator Archibald. First order of business is the reading Mr. of the President. previous day's journal. The clerk will please read. State of Senator Archibald. Archibald. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that further reading of the journal be dispensed with and the journal be accepted as printed. Senator Archibald moves that further reading of the journal be dispensed with and that the journal be accepted as printed without objection, so ordered. <laughs> next order of business is the introduction of guests, which we don't have any, but the next order of business is committee reports and communications. In the form of communications from Judge Chief Judge Michael Fort, the appointment of Denise Cassisi Finkelman as Magistrate of Family Court. The appointment of Daniel V. Ballerano as General Magistrate of the Family Court. From Mayor Alorza, the appointment of Edward D. Feldstein to the Rhode Island Convention Center Authority. Please place those on file. Next order of business is new business. From the Committee on Health and Human Services to the Senate calendar, Senate Bill number three by Senator Sosnowski, an act relating to insurance, accident, and sickness insurance policies. Senate Bill number four, sub A by Senator Miller, an act relating to insurance, the Telemedicine Coverage Act. Senate Bill Number 5, Sub A, by Senator Miller, an act relating to insurance, individual health insurance coverage. Next order of business is new business for media consideration. Senator Miller, a Senate resolution extending condolences and recognizing the 400,000 Americans who have passed as a result of COVID-19. Senator Miller. Yes, could I have the resolution? Senator Miller requests that the resolution be read. The clerk will please do so. Senate resolution extending condolences and recognizing the 400,000 Americans who have passed as a result of COVID-19. Whereas nearly one year after the nation's first confirmed case of COVID-19, the United States has surpassed 400,000 COVID deaths and 23.3 million cases, the highest in the world. And whereas in Rhode Island, more than 2,000 loved ones have been lost to this devastating virus. And whereas these losses have shattered our sense of predictability and fairness and have eclipsed our belief that we could protect our children, our elderly, and our loved ones. And whereas on January 19, 2021, on the eve of their inaugurations, President-elect Joseph R. Biden Jr. and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris 
will attend a virus memorial event to honor the lives lost during the coronavirus pandemic. And whereas at the event, 400 lights will be illuminated along the perimeter of the Lincoln Memorial Reflecting Pool, with each light representing 1,000 Americans who have died of COVID-19. And whereas the emotional toll, communal grief, and economic devastation of this disease on families, communities, and our nation will be forever etched in the hearts of all Americans and in the history of the world. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this Senate of the state of Rhode Island hereby joins all Americans in recognizing the 400,000 Americans who have passed because of COVID-19 and prays for the success of President-elect Biden's primary goal to get the pandemic under control. And be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be, and she is hereby authorized and directed to transmit duly certified copies of this resolution to members of the Rhode Island Congressional Delegation. As the resolution says, um, Rhode Island is now above 2,000 with over 40 in the last several days since the last report and 14 for yesterday. Um, this is a pandemic that has impacted everybody individually, not only globally, nationally, but also locally. And um, our heart goes out to all of those people who have been impacted, which is pretty much everybody in this room. Um, move passage. Senator Mill moves passage of the resolution. Seconded by Senator McCaffrey, Senator Goodwin, Senator Chacon, Senator Mendez, Mendes, I'm sorry, uh, Senator Anderson, Senator Paolino, Senator Archibald, Senator Sosnowski, Senator Lombardi, Senator DeMario, Senator Costa, Senator Coleman, Senator Valverde, Senator Coyne, Senator De Palma, Senator Murray, Senator Golden, Senator Bell, Senator Corkin, Senator Oya, uh, Senator Burke, Senator Algier, uh, Senator Gallo, Senator Sosnowski, Senator Picard, Senator Pearson, Senator Casada, Senator Lawson, and Senator Mack. Is there discussion on the resolution? Senator Casada. Senator Casada wanted to be recorded in the uh, as a second, hearing no objection, so ordered. Further discussion on the resolution. Senator Felag also. Uh, Senator Lombardo. Uh, Senator Seventy. Discussion on the resolution. Hearing none, those in favor of the resolution, please indicate by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Actually, I think we should rise on this issue. The resolution passes. Next item under new business is by Senator Mack, a Senate resolution commemorating the celebration of the birth of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Senator Mack. May I have that read? Senator Mack requests that the resolution be read. The clerk will please do so. Senate resolution commemorating the celebration of the birth of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Whereas in the altruistic words of the esteemed Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. He devoted his life to the advancement of civil rights and social efforts to undo the systemic effects of white supremacy, and he helped to move us closer to the ideals on which America was founded, a nation of freedom and justice for all. And whereas born on January 15, 1929, Dr. King grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, attending segregated public schools. After earning his high school diploma, he started college at the age of 15 and went on to obtain his doctorate in 1955. And whereas during his lifetime, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. changed the course of history. He led a nonviolent revolution that would forever change the social and political landscape of America. And whereas the mirror that the Reverend Dr. King held before the national conscience revealed the ugliness of racism and the hatred that had divided America throughout its history. And neither the carnage of civil war nor the self-examination that Dr. King forced upon the nation has fully eradicated the injustices which are still prevalent to this day. And whereas this year marks the 35th anniversary of the nationwide observance of the Martin Luther King Jr. federal holiday, honoring one of the most influential and iconic leaders of the civil rights movement. 
It is a time for the people of our state to recognize Dr. King's teachings by embracing and promoting his tireless, undeniable efforts towards equality and by finding ways to undo systemic, economic, and political injustice. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this Senate of the State of Rhode Island hereby commemorates the birthday of the great Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. We honor not only the man and his accomplishments, but also the continuing process of social enlightenment he founded, which lives with us still, ever pressing us to move beyond what we are and what we think we can be. A prophet of hope, Dr. King left a legacy which will live forever. And be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be, and she is hereby authorized and directed to transmit duly certified copies of this resolution to all general office holders, members of the Rhode Island Congressional Delegation, and the Martin Luther King Jr. State Holiday Commission. And in the Mac. Dr. King spoke of a powerful dream, but let us not only dream, let us live in that future. Let us create and live in that beautiful world he preached about, a state and a nation where social, political, and economic inequity are rooted out through thoughtful and intentional legislation. Dr. King preached nonviolence and direct action. He wanted us to march, to use our bodies and our dignity to stand in strong and consistent opposition of not just racism, but economic injustice. His words were dangerous because they caused us to reckon not just with the racial oppression rampant in our nation, but the economic impacts that were interwoven into that depression. The violence of racist housing practices and evictions, the violence of non-living wage jobs, the violence of environmental racism. We cannot just draw the line at racial injustice. We must also grapple openly with the uncomfortable conversations of how deep that racism goes and how far reaching those effects have been for the generations if we truly want to create the best Rhode Island. Dr. King wrote of moderates who were too devoted to order than to justice. This chamber, in the midst of the most important times in the nation, must be ready to answer the question, how far will we go for justice? Dr. King also states that the problem of racial injustice and economic injustice cannot be solved without radical redistribution of political and economic power. Will we commit to passing a minimum wage bill that puts a living wage in the hands of every single working person in our state? Will we stop at $15, which is $32,500 before taxes, or will we push for $24 to $26, which is about $50,000 before taxes? Will we commit to an eviction moratorium in the midst of a global pandemic and to funding quality low-income housing? Will we listen to the calls of activists from this summer demanding we defund our state and local police departments and fund social programs to better all of our communities? These are hard conversations, but we cannot wait. To quote Dr. King again, Wait almost always means never. These are not radical conversations. These are conversations that will help us live that bold and beautiful dream of Dr. King and continue his legacy of leading social movements. Thank you. Senator Mack moves the resolution. Is there a second? Seconded by Senator Casada, Senator Cano, Senator Costa, Senator Mendes, Senator Burke, Senator Anderson, Senator McCaffrey, Senator Goodwin, Senator Costa. Senator Picard, Senator Lawson, Senator Coleman, Senator Lombardi, Senator Pearson, Senator DeMario, Senator Gallo, Senator Miller, Senator Felix, Senator Sosnowski, Senator Algier, Senator Paolino, Senator Miller, Senator Corkin, Senator Bell, Senator Valverde, Senator Coyne, Senator Seventy, Senator Palmer, Senator Murray, Senator Golden, Senator Oyer, Senator Archibald, Senator Chacon, Senator Lombardo. On the resolution, Senator Cano. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you to Senator Mack for um, introducing this resolution. We celebrate the life of Martin Luther King Jr., civil rights activist, minister, and thought leader. Dr. King was one of the moral giants. He dedicated his life to equality, justice, and peaceful social change. Decades after his death, the fight around the world for human rights and dignity in the face of oppression, discrimination, and injustice is still real. The social injustices that fueled Dr. King's pioneering work decades ago continue to hold back the collective progress towards the nation and the world that he dreamed of. Today, we recognize that the United States continue to have challenges with civil and human rights all around the country. Dr. King was aware that the white supremacy fueled hatred and fear in our African Americans in the 1960s. If this situation left unchecked, they would continue. 
1963 from a Bridingham jail cell, he grew a letter warning that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. In fact, the pervasive effects of injustice are evident today. Violence, impunity, corporate greed, and enormous inequalities that we see Americans and immigrants live today. Is that hatred, prejudice, and racism that is tearing our nation and ourselves apart? We are so divided. Dr. King shows us example after example with words and actions of how to defeat hatred through his commitment to love. For this reason, on the anniversary of the birth of the civil rights leader, we remember this, his teachings and pay tribute to him with our actions against discrimination and in favor of social justice and the virtues of diversity which are more relevant than ever. As we honor his memory and get legacy, let's remember he called for social and economic justice. Let's remember that there is a lot of people that continue to struggle, families that live with fear of persecution, hunger, and let's continue his work and advocacy for fair living wage, health care, housing, and education for all. Not just equality, but equity. On this day, let's recommit, let's recommit to ensure that Dr. King's noble vision for justice and rights can become a reality for communities in Rhode Island, in the United States, and in the world. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Cano. Senator Casada. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I just arise today because remember Martin Luther King today um, in seeing our country, what we're going through, it's more than ever to remember when we said the flood of um, the religion, we said justice for all. And I believe we do not have justice for all. I believe we will have justice for all when we are get, when we go to a court and we get charged for the crime you do, but not for the color of your skin. When you get charged for what you, not for the sickle where you live, or you get an education for everybody, not depending where you live or the neighborhood or to who you represent. Then I will believe, and like Martin Luther King said, he had a dream. I hope one day we had that dream come through and we all get justice for everybody, not just for some. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Casada. Senator Mendes. Thank you, Senator Mack, for sponsoring this resolution in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King. I rise today, today to support this. I acknowledge that I stand before this body today with great gratitude because of the words of Martin Luther King, and not just because of the work he did, but because of a simple statement he made a long time ago, one that's not often quoted. Martin Luther King was the child of a minister. So am I. My father spent his entire life in service to the least of these until a stroke paralyzed him and left him speechless. A couple of years ago, I was reading to my father by his bedside a book on Martin Luther King, on his leadership. I read a phrase that stopped me in my tracks. The Montgomery Improvement Association had just asked this young, green, inexperienced Martin Luther to lead them. And when everything in him questioned whether this was the right, whether he was the right person for this, he accepted the invitation by responding, someone has to do it. And if you think I can, then I will serve. My father did not know, and what most people did not know at that time, as I was grappling at that moment with the idea of running for office. And these words, I will serve, hung in the air, and I looked at my father, a man who gave up law school and a life of privilege to be an inner city minister and a prison chaplain. I felt I had the answer, and I knew in that moment what I must do. And now, here we are. Not after that, my father died due to COVID-19, without a penny to his name, and was not able to witness his daughter uh, inaugurated into the Senate. But he taught me something that Martin Luther King often preached. Actually, on his last sermon, Dr. Luton, Dr. Martin Luther King preached about the myth of time. The myth of time often tells us that there is time to do what's right, that there is time that we can push off the things that must be done for equity and racial justice. And now, entering this chamber, not with pomp and circumstance, not with the normal things that we would normally experience, I am pushed into this chamber by the echoes of people's feet 
marching. I'm entering a year of crying. I am pushed by the cries of people to this day that are still crying for equity. And so, with this resolution, I speak and I pray that we no longer push off justice, that we no longer believe in the myth of time. And to be on the right side of anything regarding justice, to be on the right side of anything regarding racial justice and inequity, we must act with urgency. And the myth of time will be our barrier. And anyone that stands and totes and preaches, not now, later, you're moving too fast, is in fact the barrier that Martin Luther King said stands in the way of justice. And it is not just white supremacy, but it is anyone who says, too fast, you're going too fast. The time is up. It's been up for racial justice. We cannot have climate justice without sacrifice of certain people. We cannot have, um, we cannot have racial justice and we cannot have economic justice without actually acknowledging who has been carrying that burden. And so I am standing in deep honor and deep gratitude for the opportunity to be a voice for not just racial justice, but that a reminder that it is time and the time is now. Thank you, Senator Mendes. Senator Costa. Thank you, Mr. President. I spent the last few days partaking in the nerdy pastime of reading. I was growing tired of the platitudes that spoke about mountaintops, love, justice. I was more interested in how the man that we honored yesterday and that we honor in this resolution spoke about the society in which he lived, in his words, how he described it. And so I did some reading to try to understand what the problems were that he felt that our society confronted. The issues that he talked about were simple things. They were things like the vote, expanding the access to vote, making it easy for everybody to vote. Poverty, eradicating poverty in the richest country in the world. Housing and access to adequate housing for all people in that rich country. Jobs, incomes, working people being able to sustain themselves and their families through those jobs. And I sat and wondered what this man who read as both tired yet ever determined to change that society would think if he woke from his eternal slumber and looked at the society in which we live today. Who of us would want to chaperone him and explain to him why over half a century after he died for our country's sins of racial and colonial capitalism, it was the case that our schools stand more segregated in some cases than they were in 1954 when the Supreme Court outlawed segregation in schools. Why it is that they remain underfunded. Why it is that we continue to be the richest country in the world and yet we still have people living and dying on our streets. And I don't know what I would answer. I would be embarrassed. But I would tell him that we forgot a large part of his legacy. That we spent too much time talking about love and not enough time talking about all the other things that were important. Now, if I were talking to a group of young people, I might stand up here and say that we should take his example and look at how we can devote our life to service. If I was talking to organizers, I might say, hey, this is how you move thousands. This is how you speak in public and this is how you fundraise. But I'm talking to lawmakers. And so I want to bring power back into the equation. Now, Dr. King had a simple definition of power. In his words, he said, power properly understood is nothing but the ability to achieve purpose. It is the strength required to bring about social, political, and economic change. And he realized that even people on his side were nervous and wary when talking about power. He said there is nothing wrong with power if power is used correctly. You see, what happened is that some of our philosophers got off base. And one of the great problems of history is that the concepts of love and power have usually been contrasted as opposites, polar opposites, so that love is identified with the resignation of power and power with the denial of love. 
He goes on to say what is needed is a realization that power without love is reckless and abusive and that love without power is sentimental and anemic. Power at its best, power at its best is love. Implementing the demands of justice and justice at its best is love correcting everything that stands against love. On the eve of this legislative session, the leadership of this chamber proclaimed that we would be pursuing a bold agenda that would raise the minimum wage so that the hardest working among us would be able to live off of that wage. We proclaimed that we would work to tax the wealthiest of our brothers and sisters fairly, to improve our schools that are producing scores of young people every year who cannot read or do basic math at an eighth grade level. And so I encourage all of us to take that love that everybody loves talking about and to wield the power that was bestowed upon all of us by our voters to enact a love and power agenda as we move forward so that next year we are not embarrassed of the society that we live in and we make sure that the Rhode Island that we create and the rest of the country become an example of what Dr. King would have liked to see. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Costa. Is there further discussion on the resolution? Hearing none, all those in favor of the resolution, please indicate by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The resolution passes. The next resolution is by Senator Palmer uh, congratulating President-elect Joseph Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Senator De Palmer. Mr. President, can I please be read? Senator Palmer asks that the resolution be read. The clerk will please do so. Senate resolution congratulating President-elect Joseph Biden Jr. and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Whereas President-elect Joseph Biden Jr., a man of great experience and common instincts, will take the oath of office on January 20th, 2021 and become the 46th President of the United States, the most powerful and important position of responsibility on the globe. Hopefully in these days of great turmoil and fear, he and Vice President-elect Harris can unify the nation as together we fight and defeat a devastating pandemic, restore comedy and democratic norms within our nation, and bring peace and stability to a world on the edge. And whereas President-elect Biden was born on November 20th, 1942, to a working class family in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Growing up, President-elect Biden's family experienced economic misfortune, and he was witness to the economic decline suffered by Scranton and many other similar cities. Throughout his life, this experience gave him great empathy for the working people of America who toil and struggle every day to find good jobs and provide for their families. And whereas President-elect Biden has had a long career of distinguished public service that will serve him well in his duties as president, he served in the United States Senate from 1973 to 2009, where he was a highly respected leader who held a variety of important positions, including chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee and chair of the Foreign Relations Committee. Most importantly, he served as the 47th Vice President of the United States under President Barack Obama. His vast knowledge of world affairs and his deep understanding of how the United States Congress operates proved to be invaluable assets to President Obama and will serve him well and our nation as well as he assumes the duties of President. And whereas President-elect Biden will be ably assisted by Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, who will become the first African-American and first Asian-American Vice President of the United States. Vice President-elect Harris is a person of great accomplishment. She served as the District Attorney of San Francisco, as the Attorney General of California, and as the United States Senator from California. Throughout her distinguished public service career, she has fought tirelessly on behalf of consumer rights, equality for all Americans, public safety and criminal justice reform, and against corruption in government. And whereas Vice President-elect Harris was born in Oakland, California, to Shamela Gopalan, a biologist from Tamil Nadu, India, who did groundbreaking research on the progesterone receptor gene, which stimulated important advances in breast cancer research, and to John Donald J. Harris, a Stanford University professor emeritus of economics, who came to the United States from Jamaica in 1961. Vice President-elect Kamala Harris and her family are great examples of how diversity strengthens our nation and makes it more vibrant, both economically and civilly. Her bold vision about the future of America will be a great asset for President-elect Biden and the future of our nation. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this Senate of the state of Rhode Island hereby wishes President-elect Joseph Biden, Jr. and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris the very best as they lead our nation for the next four years. 
We hope they can steer our nation safely out of this devastating pandemic, restore our economy and economic opportunity for the people and businesses that have suffered so much over the last year, bring security and peace to our nation and the globe, and return civility and democratic norms to our nation. And be a further resolve that the Secretary of State be, and she is hereby authorized and directed to transmit duly certified copies of this resolution to the Honorable Joseph Biden, Jr., President of the United States, and the Honorable Kamala Harris, Vice President of the United States. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. And Senator Palmer. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to present this resolution before this august uh, body. Uh, going back probably a year or so ago, there's a few other folks who were co-chairs along with myself, Mayor Diosa, and Lieutenant Governor McKee with regards to uh, getting behind Vice President Biden at the time. It's a great day today, but it's really a great day for the nation. I went back and started looking at the transition of power we've had in our nation and I said, well, it's 89, 93, 2001, 2009, 2017, and it's in fact again going to be 2021 tomorrow, and in fact a little over 19 hours and 26, 24 minutes from now. In fact, we've done it 45 times. Most of those have been four, four years or eight years, but there's been once when it's been more than that. If we look across the globe with regards to the smoothest successful transition of power across the globe, I think we are still our model for the world to follow. The election's over. As it was indicated and aptly read by the uh, reader, Vice President Biden and Kamala Harris will become president and vice president in less than 20 hours, a little over 19 hours tomorrow. We do have a global pandemic to address. It's time we need to get behind them and have them lead us forward, addressing a whole bunch of other issues as was brought forth by some of the folks as they talked about the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday that we celebrated yesterday. It's an exciting day. I'm excited about it. Several of us were behind Vice President Biden in the beginning. Super Tuesday came and then more folks got on the, on the bus, which was a great bus to be on. It's a great day tomorrow. Looking forward to 12 o'clock on the 20th of uh, January tomorrow, which happens to be the first palindrome calendar date in 2021. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Palmer moves the resolution. Is there a second? Seconded by Leader McCaffrey, Senator Goodwin, Senator Cano, Senator Corkin, Senator Anderson, Senator Lombardo, Senator Lombardi, Senator Mendes, Senator Felag, Senator Mario, Senator Pearson, Senator Coleman, Senator Lawson, Senator Mack, Senator Valverde, Senator Coyne, Senator Seventy, Senator Archibald, Senator Burke, Senator Anderson, Senator Miller, Senator Gallo, Senator Bell. Senator Murray, Senator Oyer, Senator Costa, Senator Picard, and Senator Chacon, Senator Miller, Senator Sosnowski. I believe that's it. Is there discussion on the resolution? Well, Senator Golden as, as a second. Is there discussion on the resolution? Hearing none, those in favor of the resolution, please indicate by saying aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The resolution passes. <clears throat> Next item is by Senator Lawson, the Senate resolution expressing condolences on the passing of Stephen P. Brunn. Senator Lawson. Thank you, Mr. President. May I have that read? Senator Lawson requests that the resolution Please be read. The clerk will please do so. Senate resolution expressing condolences in the passing of Stephen P. Brunn. Whereas Stephen P. Brunn was born in Providence, the son of the late Manuel and Anastasia Brunn. He was a 1965 graduate of East Providence High School and graduated from Roger Williams College with a bachelor's degree in psychology. And whereas Mr. Brunn had, long, had a long and distinguished career as a member of the United States Air Force, where he served our nation with honor and distinction. He reached the rank of major in the United States Air Force Reserve and was a navigator on the KC-135. He also served as the United States Air Force liaison to the Rhode Island Civil Air Patrol. And whereas Mr. Brunn was a sports enthusiast who enjoyed baseball, bowling, chess, golf, sailing, and tennis. He was a baseball coach for the East Providence Central Little League and a tennis coach for Our Lady of Providence. He also served as a tennis instructor for the city of East Providence and was co-owner of the indoor tennis court. He was a passionate fan of the New York Giants and had loved watching the Boston Celtics games with his mother. 
And whereas Mr. Brunn is survived by a brother, Thomas Brunn, and his wife, Deborah, a sister, Joanna Catrucci, and a daughter, Melissa Catrucci. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Senate of the State of Rhode Island hereby expresses its condolences to the Brunn family on the passing of Stephen P. Brunn. And be it further resolved that the Secretary of State be and she is hereby authorized and directed to transmit duly certified copies of this resolution to Thomas Brunn and Joanna Quattrucci. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Senator Wilson. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to uh, extend my deepest condolences to the Brunn family, my dear friends uh, Tom and Debbie Brunn, and uh, I move we uh, recess in the name of Stephen Brunn, in the memory of. Senator Lawson moves the resolution. Is there a second? A second and by. Senator McCaffrey, Senator Goodwin, Senator Archibald, Senator Bell, Senator Coyne, Senator DeMario, Senator Costa, Senator Casada, Senator Picard, Senator Mack, Senator Lombardi, Senator Coleman, Senator Felag, Senator Burke, Senator Coyne, Senator Seventy, Senator Murray, Senator Lombardo, Senator Chacon, Senator Bell. Senator Coleman, Senator Casada, Senator Corkin, Senator Lawyer. Senator Chacon. Yeah. Senator Cano. I believe that's it. All those in favor of the resolution, please stand. The resolution passes. We have no consent calendar and we have no regular calendar today. We now revert to announcements and introductions. Are there any of either? Hearing none, is there any objection to transmitting adopted resolutions to the Honorable Secretary of State? All matters passed by the Senate to the Honorable House of Representatives and all matters passed in concurrence to Her Excellency the Governor Hearing none, so ordered. The desk is now clear of business. I call on Senator Goodwin for the purpose of adjournment. Thank you, Mr. President. I have uh, one quick announcement uh, to the members of the, uh, the chamber here. Uh, the resolutions that we passed today will be left up in front uh, on the stage for signatures. We ask that you uh, maintain social distancing uh, requirements when you're, when you're going to sign if, you, if you're if you want to. Uh, Mr. President, if there's no further business to come before the Senate, I yield the floor to Senator Lawson for purposes of recess. Senator Goodman, uh, um, ask Senator Lawson uh, for, for the uh, for, uh, purpose of recess. Senator Lawson. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I move uh, we re recess in the, in the memory of Stephen Brunn. Senator Lofton means that we recess in memory of Stephen Brunn. All those in favor, please stand. The Senate stands in recess.